Disney Photo Pass photographers have a number of tips and tricks that they use to be able to get great guest photos. Here's some of them. So you've looked at the pictures that Disney Photo Pass photographers get, and you've noticed that they seem to be better than the pictures you take. And you're wondering why. One of the things I would get when I was working at Disney a lot is I would have guests walk up to me and hand me their camera and say, I don't think this camera works. I can't get good pictures. Can you do something with it? Or please don't use my camera, just use yours. My camera sinks, I can't get anything good. Most of the time it's not the camera that's the problem, it's the person using it because they don't know what they're doing. Trust me, I'm guilty. I used to take horrible photos. Back in the days of film, my parents didn't like to pay for developing all the pictures I took because most of them were terrible. They were too dark or cutting off heads or you couldn't tell who was in it and just not good pictures. Most of the time that's the photographer, not the camera. And if you know how to use the camera, you can make even a cheap camera take pretty good pictures. So what are the tricks? What are the tips? How do people make the castle look so good and the people so close? There's a number of things that we did. For example, if we were going to take a picture of a guest or a family in front of, say, the castle or Spaceship Earth, we didn't send them all the way up to the castle to take the picture. We kept them close to us. And we didn't stand very far away from them, usually. If I was taking a picture of a guest or a family in front of the castle, I would only stand a few feet away from them, somewhere between 5 to 15, depending upon where on the street I was. I would keep the family nice and close, and I would try to shoot from the shortest person's waist on up. So even about what you're seeing in this picture, from about right there up. It looks good. You've got a nice close-up of the person, but you can see what's behind them. And then we would actually use our zoom lenses to zoom in and bring the castle closer. You didn't want to send them all the way up to the castle because they ended up really tiny. See, I didn't used to know that. My family and I, we visited Washington, D.C. one time, and we went to see the Lincoln Memorial. Well, to get a picture of my wife and kids with them, I sent them all the way up the steps, all the way up next to the pillar, and I took the picture of the memorial with them. You notice you really can't see them? They're there. Yeah, right there. But you'd never know it. Keep the people close and then use the zoom lens to bring what's behind them up close. If you need to step back a step or two to be able to zoom it in better, great, do that. But you don't want to be too far away from the people. Now our standard picture in front of the castle would be a vertical picture showing everything and then a horizontal picture that would be a, more of a close up. You'd still make sure you could see the castle in the background and kind of bring it close. But that was our normal routine and then we would do a candid or a creative shot after that. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. With characters, we didn't stay in a fixed position like we would with the castle or Spaceship Earth. We would move around, and that's because the characters were moving and the people were moving. They weren't just kind of in a static posed position. There would be a picture at the end where we would pose them, but most of the time you're trying to get the candids in the moment. And so you're running around and you're coming over from one side and then you're swinging all the way around to the other side to get the other angle. You may be crouching, you may be standing up, and a lot of good photography is simply moving yourself to get in the best position to take the picture. A lot of times when we're starting out, we want to kind of stay here and try and make the picture fit us. And really, a good photographer is going to move themselves to fit the picture. That's how you get the really nice angles. So when you see a little kid meeting character, you'll be down on one knee or both knees or sitting on the ground. I had times I would actually lay down on the ground with the characters if they're playing on the ground with a baby or something because I was going to get down where that photo was, not try to make it come up to my level. And you can get some great photos that way. If I had a character that I knew was a hugger, and Mickey would fall into this realm, so would a lot of the princesses, I would actually try to talk to the character ahead of time if I could, and find out what their routine was. Did they like to hug with both hands? Did they like to kind of do a side hug? Did they bring the person close? Did they put them on the left shoulder or on the right shoulder? And that way I could have an idea ahead of time where to be in the best position to get that picture and to get the guest's face in the picture because that's what would make it even more special. We would constantly adjust ourselves to be able to get the photo. Don't hesitate to move around and bend down and stand up. Line yourself up to be able to get the best picture possible. 
Now with characters, we did do one other thing a little different. For our vertical shot, where with the castle, we would cut people off at the waist, for characters, we would go all the way down to the feet and actually get a picture of a little bit of the floor. So with the character, you would go head to toe, but with something like the castle, you'd go from about the waist up and then use the background. So a little different angle. With both of them though, you had the horizontal close up to make it a nice intimate picture. Now I mentioned the creative shots that we did in front of the castle or spaceship earth or out in the parks. And those were kind of our third or fourth option. And they were where we would have some fun. Now in training, they would give us some basic ideas of standard creative shots. Things like the ta-da. Ta-da! And you can get everybody to kind of, yay! And have a little bit of fun with that. Other ones that you might do, which would be kind of a standard pose, if you had two people, is you'd have them stand back to back and cross the arms and smile or look serious. If I had a young couple, I would also do the prom pose, which is where you'd have the lady stand in front of the guy and he'd put his arms around her, kind of like you see in a prom picture. It's a standard deal. We would also look for other ways to get creative as well. We would have people do funny faces, goofy faces, and try to have everybody come up as silly as possible. Or and various things that you could do. One of the ones I really like to be able to do if I had a group of teenagers or college kids is the jump shot. And what a jump shot is very simply is a picture with your castle and everybody's jumping and all in the air at the same time. It's not as easy as it sounds. It's not hard to set up, but it's amazing how many people could not take this picture or how many people couldn't jump on time. What I would do for a jump shot is I would have everybody in the group line up shoulder to shoulder. Okay, so what I want everybody to do is I want everybody to come up front here, about okay. right there. <laughs> wow. I want everybody facing that direction, stand approximately you know, shoulder to shoulder, and then you're gonna to spread a little bit. Everybody come next. Your right arm up. I try to do this. Right arm. Yeah, right. I'm and doing then this. And then touching the shoulder. So you need a little more room here. scoot down. What I want everybody to do, what I'm going to have you do, is I'm going to have you all get down like this. Okay? Uh -huh. I'm going to count. One, two, three, jump. What way do we jump? Uh -oh. Up. I'm scared. One, two, three, jump. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, jump. <laughs> Better. Make sure you get your feet up. No. You gotta jump as soon as I say jump. So it's one, My two, three, like jump. <laughs> okay? Sometimes it takes two or three tries to actually get everybody to jump on time, but you can eventually get it. And especially if you can tell them to get their hands out and look more fun and big yells, it's even better. We had one photographer, I remember, and I'm pretty sure this was Jen that did this the first time I saw it. Before the parades, they would actually bring out hula hoops and other toys for kids to play with in the street while they were waiting. Well, Jen actually would take little kids, grab a hula hoop, and she would have them stand in the middle of the street and hold the hula hoop off to one side. And then she would sit down or lay down and take a picture of the child holding the hula hoop and put the castle right in the middle of the hula hoop so it would frame it. Just a really neat looking pretty shot. And one that I have to admit that I stole and used a couple times. And that's one thing that we did a lot. If we saw another photographer doing something that we liked, we'd grab the idea and we'd steal, st or borrow, or well, we would just use it because it was a good idea. And I was constantly looking out for new ideas and then using them in ways to get people to have fun. I love to be able to have a big family have somebody hold the map up front, and turn it upside down, then have everybody point in a different direction. Especially if you get somebody going, it's that way. I might, if I had a family with a mom and dad who were still very much affectionate, I would have the kids all stand around mom and dad and cover up their faces. And then I'd make mom and dad give each other a nice kiss. Or if the kids were really kind of like, you. Even better, I'd just make them all make a really sick, goofy face. And then make mom and dad kiss. They were just fun pictures that way. And so you could constantly look for ways for people to have fun while they took the picture. And make even taking the picture memorable. You tease and joke with the kids and, hey Johnny, don't you really want to see mom and dad kiss? No! And then of course you set it up and well, they have this great memory of the picture. And so then when they see the picture, well, now they've got to have it. Another one that was really fun is if it was a couple with a young child up to about age three or so, I would tell them to hold the little one up so that all three heads were about the same height, put the kid in the middle, and then I would have mom and dad each give the little one a kiss on the cheek. 
and not just a little kiss, but a nice firm one. So that way the face would go and then get that picture. And it was just a beautiful picture with the castle behind and kid going, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. But those weren't the only memorable shots that we took. Disney also has this incredible thing called a magic shot. And magic shots were tons of fun. Magic shots are what some people would call Photoshop, but it's not Photoshop, it's Disney magic. And it's where you put something unexpected in the picture that they can't see. Now the normal one everybody sees is when people hold their hands out and lo and behold, there's Tinkerbell on their hands. If I had a boy and a girl for this one, I would love to have the boy put his hand out like that and give a really disgusted and then have the girl point and look excited. I did this even with my kids for this one. It was a really neat picture. But we also had pictures where we would have people point up in the air and depending upon which park you were at, it might be Tinkerbell flying overhead at the Magic Kingdom. It might be Figment or a thing from soaring over at Epcot. It could be a bird flying overhead at Animal Kingdom. There were some other old ones that we would do where people could hold Simba kind of like a baby. So you'd put their arms up like this, just that way Simba could appear in there later. There were also bench shots. We had a picture where we could post people on a bench and leave a space and we could put Mickey in the picture or Minnie in the picture or even Stitch making a mess in the picture. And you just had to make sure that when you put people on this bench, that you left a space for the character. Because if you didn't line it upright and you didn't leave that space in the right place, well, the character wasn't exactly gonna fit in there. But it made for some really cute pictures. You had to be very careful with some of the bench shots though. People weren't always aware of the way they were sitting. I can remember in particular one time over at Epcot, and you know, people would be drinking their way around the world. And I had this group of young ladies that they had been having a good time pretty obviously. And they were insistent they wanted to get some magic shots. And I started to try to set up for a couple bench pictures like with Minnie. And I realized that it wasn't going to work with these girls. They were all wearing skirts that were above their knee. And they, like I said, had been having a pretty good time and they had apparently forgotten how to sit with skirts on. Well, that was not going to be a real good picture and not a really appropriate picture. So we're not going to do that one. Let's find another pose that we can do with you. So you did have to be careful how you arranged your guests. If you were doing one, for example, where there was a character on the ground, you had to make sure that you left a space on the ground for that character to pop up. For example, if Sitch is coming up out of the hole in the ground and making a mess and everybody's pointing down, well, you gotta make sure that you got a space for Stitch. Now they've got a bunch of new ones too. They had the sword fighting with Captain Hook that I loved and they actually changed that into a Darth Vader lightsaber fight later. But now they've got things where it's snowing at Everest. You can have a flying banshee over in Pandora now. You've got Chip the teacup who also appears on a hand or Figment up in the tree. And of course now you've got Olaf too with a nice cold picture there. The thing that's really cool now too is they've actually started doing animated magic shots. Like these couple ones that are from the art festival that they just had. Or this new one here with Tinkerbell over at the Magic Kingdom. These are just cool in my book. Love how they started doing this. The thing with all of these magic shots though is that not every photographer could do them. You had to have special training to make sure that you knew how to position the guests. Because if you didn't frame the guests in your picture right, you were going to mess it up and the magic wasn't going to work. So for example, if you use the picture from Frozen with the snowman, you want to make sure that the guests were over onto one side of the picture. Because if you put them right in the middle, well, now there's not any room for your character to be in the picture with them. If you're doing a picture of people on the bench, you had to make sure that you would put them in such a way that there would be a space right there for the character to be able to be. And that character would be in different places. For the bench shot, it would be about right there. Now, if it was one up in the air, you had to make sure you leave that spot open. And so you had to learn where to be able to put this as well as how to make the guests react to whatever it was. For example, there's a picture of Stitch coming up out of the ground making a mess. Well, you would want the guests to point down at the ground 
and look at that spot and look horrified or shocked. But at the same time, you couldn't tell them what the picture was because it was meant to be a surprise. So you can give them some suggestions on what to pretend or maybe how to pose or the expression to put on their face and then let them have some fun later when they got to see what it was. All of those different things combined to help make the guest shots the best they could be. Knowing how to position guests, knowing how to make the backgrounds come forward and look alive and huge, knowing how to put yourself in position to be able to get the best picture possible, and knowing how to be able to get the guests to be able to react and express themselves and have fun with the photos so you could get the best ones. All of those combined to help make the great guest photos possible that PhotoPass was able to capture. So that's a look at some of what we used to do to help make the pictures awesome when I worked with PhotoPass. Hope you got some ideas for your photos out of it and what you can do to help make them a little bit better. If you've learned anything or have any great comments or maybe a PhotoPass photographer got a great photo of you or your family or friends, I'd love to hear about it. Please share it in the comments below. I'd really love to see it. If you like this video too, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up and share this as well on your social networks. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. And if you want to know about my Facebook page, Patreon, Reddit, how to buy merchandise or anything, don't forget to check the links below as well. Thank you too to my patrons because they are the ones who help make this possible, including my new ones that just signed on this last month. So I want to make sure I give a special shout out to my new ones, including, and I hope I say these right, Craig Kalai, Rachel Rosal, or Russell, I hope I said that right, Melissa Tid, and Ronnie Ward. Thank you so much. If you want to know more about Patreon supporting me, check out the link below. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being a part of this. So you want to know how the PhotoPass photography... So you want to know some tips and tricks that the Disney photographers use to get great looking photos and make people in them look good and happy? Well, here's some of the tricks. Crappy start. Disney PhotoPass photographers have a number of tricks and tips that they use to get a great guest photo as... One of the things I would get as a Disney PhotoPass photographer a lot is... Ow, man. I just... Yeah. Don't know what that is. Okay. I would stand maybe five to ten minutes... Ten minutes? Yeah, I would stand a time away from them. <laughs> what you don't know is this is the second whole time I'm shooting this video because it was so bad. Oh my goodness. Hey. Hello. Hi, I've got something for George. For yes. Nash. Is that you? That's me. Alrighty. Need your autograph. Yep. Thanks, there sir. You go. Thank you Have so much. One. You too. Delivery driver with papers for France. <laughs> okay. So with a character, you would go head to toe, but with a... <sighs> Burp. Man, I can't get anything. This video is just not working. Oh, what's my closing? So welcome to Patron. So welcome my new Patreon. Ah.